The Small Business Show, episode 151. No, wait, I have that backwards. The Small Business Show, episode 151 for Wednesday, December 27th, 2017. <laughs> Thanks, folks, and welcome back to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show by, for, and about small business owners. This episode is sponsored by Smiles Text Expander. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California, I'm Shannon Jean. And man, I love some text expander. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about that. It's one of my favorite apps. <laughs> I don't oh, cool. get too excited, but cool. yeah, it's awesome. That's yeah, great. It's really awesome. Uh, yeah. Well, we've got it and we've got a deal for people, too. So but cool. we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that's good. So this is our last episode of the calendar year. Calendar years Woo-hoo. always seem to mean something to us for for a lot yes. of reasons, especially on this show. And yep. uh, so, I, Shannon, I thought, you know, we would go through and kind of like we did last year, look back. And uh, actually, I think now that I say this, I think it took us two episodes to do this right last year. But uh, but let's look back at, at some of the things that we did on this show throughout the year and the lessons that we learned. Do you want to uh, you want to start us off, man? Sure. OK. Yeah. I, I mean, uh, if you if you haven't gotten if you listen to the show a few times, I mean I love doing this show. I love talking about business, uh, you know the the hard stuff, the fun stuff, the stories, and and just getting to meet some of these awesome uh, small business owners. You know I, I always say I'm learning the most on this show, uh, even after you know 25 years in business. Uh, some of these folks that come on, it's just it's just fantastic. Uh, one of those guys uh, was in our January 25th episode. Uh, Jay Gentile from Booster Bots. And what I loved about Jay is that this guy's done all kinds of stuff. You know, he's trying to start an iPhone business, you know, repairs, doing all these different things, programming, building websites. And he found that automation was the key to his success at whatever business that he did and decided to build a business around that automation and booster bots is just that it helps you, you know, market your stuff on uh, different platforms and he's got different bots for, for different things. And, and he's just, he's a good guy, really uh, genuine. And I, I really enjoy talking with him and I've used his services and, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have him on. So uh, boosterbots.com, you should check it out. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I, yeah. That was it. That was a good one. I, 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 I didn't have that on my list, but I did enjoy, I mean, I've enjoyed every interview and I like you, yeah. uh, you know, I, I, I am uh, it, it, nipping at your heels in terms of being the one that learns the most from from this <laughs> show. So, yeah, <laughs> it's good. That's cool. Uh, it is good stuff. You know, the um, it, the we've, we've had a lot of great interviews throughout the throughout the year. But when we interviewed Jump Hand Z, right, we interviewed David oh, yeah. from Jump Hand yep. Z. And I mean, it, like the the whole idea about living anywhere and running a business, I always thought that I had that locked up. Like, oh, I can, you know, I have a virtual company, so I can live, you know, kind of where I want to live. Why I live somewhere where it's snowing, uh, you know, my family questions. But uh, David and and uh, I can't remember who, oh, and his wife, Elle, uh, they live, I mean, they've lived truly all oh, yeah. over the place. Like, yep. like, they don't even have a place to live. They just live. So, yeah, yeah. No, they, it's, it's awesome. Uh, definite, the uh, you know, digital nomads and, yeah. uh, that I know he just followed up with me cause we, we've talked about having him back on the show and David said they're, you know, they're just getting ready to leave for Southeast Asia, Thailand, Vietnam, and Cambodia for I think six months or something as they, as they, as they continue to run their business. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I know. I love it. Awesome. And, and impressive, it. you know, it's, really it's very impressive. Cool. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's cool. That's stuff. good. And then, you know, we we did a show just you and I talking uh, uh, in March first about effective problem solving, and and I really like that because as as small business owners, that's really what we are. You know, if you can solve someone's problem, you you can be massively successful. Uh, and b- being you know a good problem solver is just one of the critical parts uh, to you know, owning a small business and having it be successful. Um, 
And it, it kind of related into another show a couple, about you know, two weeks later was a show about a concept called the two tokens that uh, was mentioned on the Monday note by, uh, you can pronounce his name better than I can, Dave, Jean-Louis Jean-Louis Gasset, Gasset. is that correct? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Got it, yeah. Uh, you know, lots of Apple history and the BOS and everything, but his concept of the two tokens um, is just awesome and right on when he said it. And I realized that, you know, I've been kind of doing that my whole life where you're, you're, there's, there's two choices when you're working with your customer uh, and you've got it, you, they're laid on the table and one of you is going to grab one choice and the other one's going to grab the other. So you need to, to kind of manipulate isn't the right word, but you need to choose the right token. So your customer chooses the token you want. Um, so listen to that show back, uh, you know, in episode 118 on it. And uh, it was it's fantastic. I love yeah. It. I like. I, I need to remember that. Uh, I'm pretty good at customer service, but that yeah. two tokens concept is it's such a shortcut to success with a customer that it it really is. You know, I, I feel like I should put a sticky up on my on my computer or whatever yep. that just says, you know, pick the right token. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe because a picture I mean, of Neo there or something. Yeah. Yes, that's it. Because, I mean, you can't predict the future. But let me tell you, if you use this concept, y- you can predict pretty close how that customer is going to. Yeah. yeah. And how they're going to respond when you're trying to effectively solve a problem that you have with your client. And yeah. uh, it is absolutely the right way to do it. And uh, I would suggest you listen to that show. It's powerful. You know, uh, we had the opportunity to interview Lance from Bolt NWA back in April. <laughs> yeah. He it was, was awesome. He, he was the one that, that built these uh, escape rooms. Yeah. And I, I actually, since then, I've had the opportunity to experience a couple of ex- escape rooms, not his, but, yep. but Me other too. ones. Me too. Yeah. And they're, I mean, they're a total blast. Talk about exercising your problem solving skills and teamwork skills and all that. It's great. But Lance was such a, like a unique guy. He, um, I, like when we first started talking to him, I thought, man, this guy's like, Lance, don't take this the wrong way. I, I thought, <laughs> oh, this guy's like, what kind of hick did Shannon find? <laughs> like, that's <laughs> but, what I thought of. Yeah. But, but you know, I, I like, that's a lesson I had to learn when I moved down to Texas. And I actually have had this conversation with, actually with the CEO of a publicly traded company, like just because somebody speaks with a little bit of a drawl and a little slower yep. and an accent doesn't mean they are not as smart as a whip. And oh, yeah. the problem is that friendly drawl and accent and and, you know, uh, sort of buddy, buddy attitude totally makes you let your guard down. And before you know it, that person ate your lunch and, yep. and they own everything that you wanted to own. So, yep, yeah. Uh, and he definitely had that that vibe uh, to him because by the end of the interview, it was like, Holy crap. I learned so much from this dude, but yeah, he was, first. he was really, and, and, you know, super genuine yeah. and, and just really into it, but very successful franchising the bolt NWA concept, uh, yeah, you know, he said, out there. And when it was he just so cool. Casually mentioned franchising. It, I nearly fell out of my chair here. It's like nobody casually mentions franchising. He's like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. You just do this and this. Like, dude, yeah. what are you talking about? <laughs> but that's, yeah. that's why guys like that are successful. It was really, yeah. I agree. It was one of those enlightening things. So I, uh, that was a good one. I, the, yeah. yeah. The thing that, that first got me, set me off. It's like, what's going on here was when <laughs> basically he just sat down in their lobby and recorded the show. And I, and I was like, <laughs> What's what's going on here, Mike? You know, but he was like, oh, it's just we do everything out in the open this way, and it, it was cool. And uh, you know, I, I think a very successful guy that uh, had another business was running the some kind of farm thing, and then yeah. came in and launched it. It was cool. I yeah. enjoyed talking with him as well. Yeah, so good it guy. Was great. <laughs> yeah, it was good. That was Lance. That's right. I'm like, now Mike is Mike Pyle was the next uh, folk interviewed on the fifteenth of March. Episode 110 was, uh, or actually before that, was uh, from Uppercase Branding. And he is fascinating because, you know, we think of branding, we're all hustling, running our small business, and it's part of our job. Okay, what's our brand and how we're going to grow it and everything. But, you know, this is this guy's full-time job. Yeah. And he really had some great insight in presenting your brand and telling the story of your small business to you. to your customers and potential customers because uh, so, so people can relate to it. And I thought, 
He was he was excellent. And one of the comments that he made that I really liked was he was, you know, brainstorming is a waste of time. And he had some other effective ways to get at what you were looking for to come up with names or work on your brand. And uh, it was a great episode. You should definitely want to want to listen on yeah. to that one. Uh, you know, it's not just interviews that we do here. We uh, we do shows like this where it's just Shannon and I. And I know you know that. But I value those just as much, sometimes more. And we did one back in May, show 121. Uh, also a palindromic episode. Uh, mm. Hey, there you go. Where, you know, the concept of learning to say no came up and we were just answering a question, I think, for uh, listener Robert. And it, it, I I struggle with that. And, and I know all of us, uh, especially, you know, you start a company, you learn to say yes to every opportunity that comes up because it might be the last one. And learning to say no is a valuable thing. And actually, I went in a, another one of my businesses. I went through an exercise with that this week where I came to the, you know, I sort of did all my research and came to the end. And it was like, no, we could say yes to this, uh, but we don't have to. So, you know what? We're going to say no. And and it yeah. was it was really it was it was a, an empowering thing. And and so that lesson stuck with me. Uh, and I think we did the right thing with this with this other business for it. So, yeah, it's yeah. it's often easier, you know, to say just say yes. Yeah, so oh, we'll try it and we'll see what happens. But you cannot, you know, oftentimes it takes your eye off the ball on something else. Totally. And there's some opportunity costs there. And uh, yeah, that, that that was a good episode. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, and then around April fifth, we uh, did an episode uh, about the revenue stack concept. Uh, and we, you know, I, I kind of stole the nomen, you know, the naming of that from uh, the um, uh, talent stack concept. Uh, and I will get the author here in a minute. Uh, but uh, the, the thing with the revenue stack, as we talked about, was not always having, you know, all your revenue come from, from one source. And uh, I, I, I have, you know, it's can attest to that, that uh, Scott Adams, that's who I uh, oh, yeah. gleaned that the talent stack on there. And, and like, like his concept, you know, it was stacking up these various talents you had uh, or have to, to be powerful, that you didn't need to be a super expert or a or super performer with one type of talent. And, and I would argue it's the same in, in, in business is that you can generate all kinds of multiple revenue streams from different areas. So maybe you're not hitting home run on, uh, you know, on one thing that could be vulnerable, but you've got a whole, you know, uh, suite of, uh, different revenue streams coming in. Uh, and not long after that, we did an interview with one of my, you know, favorite guys, small business guy who actually used to be an employee of mine. That's, you know, done fantastic and super successful. Um, and it's Kyle Backus from Casey tool who we've had on the show twice. And w this time we talked about selling your business and, and then we expanded on the revenue stack model and developing multiple income streams. And he's done a great job at that. So, uh, I would highly recommend you go back and listen to him. He's, uh, uh, really good at, even when he worked for me, coming up with ways to generate additional income. And I've always told all my employees, like, well, what do you have going on the side? You know, what's your, you know, folks call it a side hustle or whatever, but uh, you know, we have something going on to help you build up something on your own. And Absolutely. Uh, he really took, yeah. And he took it to heart and he's bought and sold a couple of businesses now and owns some real estate and a couple, you know, a couple of buildings and he's really done great. I'm really proud of the guy. And, um, uh, he's just a great guy. I enjoyed that show a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always love talking to Kyle cause he's, he's got so much energy and it's so <laughs> focused. Does. Like he's, he's not, he doesn't come across as that crazy ADD kind of, you know, energy like you and I have. Yeah. He's, he's pretty subdued. He's yeah. pretty, yeah, but he's focused. Like he's, yes. he's on task, man. And he won't let yeah, you get is. away with stuff. I, I really, but he's a nice guy. It's not like he's a jerk about it. At least. Yeah. I mean, I've never worked for him, so I don't know, but yeah. yeah well, he's not afraid or, or worried, I guess, about not questioning, questioning what you're saying and, and saying, oh, you know, I don't agree with that. Uh, and not kind of 
he's not a guy that goes along with things even, you know, so, not a uh, yes and, man. and I, I, yeah. Yeah. And I, re- and I respect that, you know, and, uh, uh, but he's got good, good instincts. I mean, I've, I've he does. had some, you know, not yes men work for me that, uh, that have bad ideas and it's like, yes. Oh crap. Like this is going to tank the business if we <laughs> like keep following That's these right. ideas. So no, yeah, I yeah. can, I can see where it made sense for him to go out on his own. I'm sure you missed him, uh, when he did. But that's how, you know, that's yeah, how yeah for sure. It's OK. But it was yeah. great. I mean, it's a great example of encouraging people. W- w- and when the time was for them to leave was right. And then watching them grow and blossom and then being totally. able to come back full circle and, you know, I like have them on this show. It's just really fantastic. That's I love cool. it. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great. Very, very cool. Hey, uh, I want to take a minute and talk about one of your favorite things, Shannon. That is our first sponsor, <laughs> which is Text Expander. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Sure. Uh, I'll tell you right up front and I'll tell it to you again t- at the end too. Uh, visit textexpander.com slash podcast. No, that's not me missing the, you know, not inserting the right code. It's just generic for everything. Textexpander.com slash podcast gets you 20% off your first year of a text expander subscription for you and or your business. Uh, you know, text expander, it's something that I use and have used for years It's put simply, it's a tool that lets you create boilerplate text, Uh, but not just text, but it lets (laughs) you create boilerplate that you can then invoke with a short keystroke. So a a, a simple example is if I want to insert my address somewhere, right? I type comma D-H-A-D-D. And it puts Dave Hamilton's address right there, formatted the way I want, multiple lines of text, all of that. And I have to do that constantly. So I have it put my phone number there because people that want to ship me things always want to know my phone number too. Great. No problem. It's there. But you can also do things like form emails where not only do you lay out the text of the email, but you leave yourself spots to put data in, like maybe the name of the customer or the name of the product they got from you. And it will prompt you to insert those things and then it'll populate your email. And that's where it can start to really be valuable. And I think you've used it that way in your business, right, Shannon? Dude, the tech expander will change your life, let me tell you. And especially as a small business owner in the beginning without a lot of resources – that this app alone can help you build your business and and you can just seem like you know you're well and you are you're more professional uh you know when you have other employees and you want to make sure they're answering the emails the correct way you can build those templates that they can use for you know customer service for lead generation everything else it, it is it's a life changer it is phenomenal I, I use it every single day uh for basically forever and uh i, I love it it's it's just it is you know the, there's so many apps that you use for a little bit and then maybe you don't use them anymore, but text expander, man, it's in my menu and it's just, uh, it's awesome. You just, you really owe yourself, uh, it'll, it'll save you so much time. It's, it's just phenomenal. Awesome. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. So go check it out for yourself. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast. Uh, from that page, you should be able to choose which podcast you heard about it on. We sh- we sure would hope that you'd choose this one. But visit textexpander.com slash podcast. That gets you 20% off of your first year. And then you can join the ranks of people like Shannon and I who are... Uh, who have seen the light and uh, and are happy to live amongst it every day with text We're expander. addicted to it, We're man. Addicted. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally. awesome. Uh, yeah. Our thanks to Text Expander for sponsoring the episode. Hey, um, Listo Pencil was a yeah. really interesting interview, and I think we both had this one on our on our we list. We did, yeah. Rick Stewart. Yep. yep. Uh, we did it back in January, almost a year ago. But man, I mean, he took over a business that's, you know, almost a hundred years old. And, you know, like some of the lessons were really weird. He went low tech with it and got smaller in order to grow. It was just really fascinating to me. It was. Yeah. 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 Interesting guy. Multi-generational business. Yeah. Yeah. And his, you know, his comment about, you know, eventually becoming, uh, 
you know, the boss or a supervisor of an employee that knew you when you were a baby, <laughs> you know, or something, or when you were a little kid, yeah. you know, running down, running around the factory kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's a really sharp guy. Uh, who, <laughs> no pun who, intended. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's right. That's good. Uh, and, and I, 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 uh, I think very highly of him and he's done great things with that business, uh, kind of reinventing it and how it works. And, uh, that, that, that was a good episode. So oh, very it's cool. Fascinating. Yeah. It, me, well, and he argued that, that business. Yeah. Yeah. And his, his argument for the show really was that it's, he felt it was more difficult to take over and, and manage and grow an existing business, especially one that's been around for like a hundred years versus starting something new. So it's a, it's a really interesting take on uh, small business ownership. So yeah. you, you don't want to miss that one. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. 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 Really interesting. That's good. Yeah. And then in August, we interviewed a couple of guys that I really like. Um, uh, you know, I'm an avid waterfowl enthusiast and uh, um, outdoors and hunt all the time. And and we do a lot to support the environment around here in Tristan, California with uh, Ducks Unlimited and stuff. And Corey uh, and Doug from Tangle Free Waterfowl came on the show and talked about what they've learned in, in uh, running their company and the thing that really stood out to me was that the lesson that Corey had learned when he's or after his first visit to China, when he was having some product made and the difference in, he told a story about, you know, buying a dozen of, you know, a dozen widgets and the cost was 10 bucks. And he went to another factory to buy those, look at those dozen widgets and the cost was, you know, $13. And he, at the time he said, wow, there's no way we could afford the 13. We got to go for the 10. But looking back, he realized how much that really cost them in money and time and, and quality of the product that they were selling. Uh, and it's a, it's a really good lesson. It really stuck with me. Yeah. I, I had forgotten about that lesson in that show. It, that, that I agree with you. That was, that was a good one for sure. For sure. Yeah. Got it. Um, you know, one show that if I had to pick one of the interviews that we did, that keeps coming up for me, and perhaps it's because I need to do more of this here, uh, it was the one that we did, uh, Small Business Show 114, with Kelly Loudermilk from Build HR. Uh, oh, yeah. Frankly, I think she needs to charge a lot more for her um, for her services and, and all of that, but at yourhrsource.com. But I, I'm always thinking about this, like, what a great idea to just pull all this stuff together, because HR is one of those things that, you kn- it's, it's, it's like that annoying little buzz uh, that you hear some of the time, right? It's like, I can't find it. I, I don't want to have to deal with it, but you have to deal with it. And you have to deal with it before it becomes a problem. It's like, you know, we, yeah. we talked in the last episode about insurance. Make sure you have insurance before you need it. Well, the HR stuff, uh, as I'm sure Shannon can attest as well as I, if you don't have that in place before you need it, it might bite you in the butt. Uh, it can. Yeah, it can. certainly. Yeah. So... So I, I'm always thinking about that one, like, oh, yeah, I got to go back. I got to talk to Kelly and and, you know, buy some of her stuff so that I can I can do this before she raises her rates. But, you know, that's OK. Yeah, she's a great resource and has a bunch of stuff up on the uh, the Build HR website, uh, you know, that that's that all of us can use and benefit from. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Fascinating stuff. You got it. Uh, who's up next? We're going to do uh, well, we just had these guys on the show uh and well, let's jump back a little bit. Let's, okay. let's do um, David Oliva of RD Appliance. Yeah. Uh, this, I love this guy uh, because David, you know, kind of took a, let's say, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, you know, a, a family business that's just, a, oh, we're in the appliance repair business, doesn't sound very sexy and this yep. kind of thing. But he really changed the model uh, and, and was trying to go away from, average run-of-the-mill work and focus on the high end and uh, focus on quality and education, making sure that they were one of, if not the only, one of the few uh, uh, service companies in their area to work on some of these higher end appliances and uh, and finding, you know, bringing value to their customers that way. Uh, I love, you know, his concept of you know, raising our prices. Uh, oh yeah. A lot. I mean, <laughs> it was it, great. What a weird thing to do to step into a business and say, yeah, we need to, you know, triple our prices or double our prices, whatever like that. Yeah. That seems like the kiss it. That's, that's such a classic rookie mistake. 
And for him, it worked out. It was totally the right it move. It worked out. But, yep. it, you know, you, you see that all the time. Somebody comes in, they get a cursory knowledge of what's going on, and they're like, you're not charging enough. I, I know how to fix this. We just charge our, our customers more. It'll be fine. Like, no, they're going to go away. <laughs> like, like, that's the last thing you do when you take over a business, at least from conventional wisdom. But he said, yeah. no, it is the right yeah, thing. Yeah, And for he him. was right. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and that concept... Ahead. I had this one on my list, too, because of that concept of being a great tech doesn't make you a great business owner. And those of us oh, that have sure. spent time being great techs or any kind of techs uh, have learned that lesson probably a couple times over. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's great. <laughs> That's and then, crazy. you know, a couple. Yeah. And a couple guys we, we just had on the show, uh, Jerry Bolander, um, who just wrote The Entrepreneur Ethos, which is an awesome book. I just got my signed copy in the mail. I don't know if you got yours uh, yet, Dave, but... Uh, no, he's, and, he's and, closer to you, so you, you would ah, get yours ahead of mine. Go. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then we had uh, Mihir Shah from Drobo on as well, who we, we you know love to have come back on the show as well, who took over that you know company and kind of turned things around. But those two guys, you know... I, I just sit here. It's like, man, these guys are really smart. <laughs> you know, I just hear it. Really and smart. Yeah. 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 And, and Jerry's, you know, uh, his mission of, of you know, creating better companies that in essence, take better care of everybody and, and treats everybody with respect. And, uh, his, his thought that, to be a very a successful entrepreneur, business owner, you don't have to be a jerk. You know, I, I really, uh, that really, you know, has resonates with me. And, uh, you know, we've tried to do that and uh, that was a great show. I loved it. Uh, yeah, I, oh, I, it was great. Yeah, for sure. I would definitely want to have those guys back. And I honestly, I think, uh, I want to have them back separately. I, I think there's, there's value yeah. to mine in each of them without, uh, necessarily them playing off each other. Not that that was I would bad, agree. but uh, you yeah. know, as, as oh, yeah. we were going through it, it was like, oh, wait a minute. I, I want to like individually shut each of you up and, and hear from the other for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot more there there. Yeah, there know. was a lot more uh, there, yeah. there for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. We did an interview uh, early in the year, back in January, with Field Harmony, Tyler Merritt from Field yeah. Harmony. And there was that one lesson that has come back to me several times, which is, you know, his best mistake was forgetting that other people, even your business partners, are not <laughs> yeah. you. They don't think like you and they don't right. know what you're thinking. And man, it like that resonated so loudly with me. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I always get so frustrated when people don't see what's obvious to me. And there's no way that they can always see what's, I mean, no. that's like, that's right. I know that's, that's right. real. That's unreasonable, but it doesn't matter. It's, you know, yeah. It, yeah. Well, and one of the other thing that Tyler said that I have, you know, I, I, I steal everybody's quotes over and over on this show sure, because I, I, it makes me sound far more uh, impressive than I actually am. But he made a comment that really hit me when he said, what we are basically doing with our company is buying back our time. Yeah. And, you know, earning revenue to buy for our time till we can have our own time back. And I was like, man, that is really powerful because the time, it really is the most precious thing we have. And, you know, it's finite and everything else. Uh, and, and I thought, you know, he really nailed it. And, and I, uh, I hope those guys are doing great and we should have him back on the show. Sometime. Yeah, we should. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, uh, a, a couple of months ago, we talked to some guys that were building the, their uh, rental car business on the Turo platform. Yeah. Gurjeet and Kevin. Right? Gr yep. Yeah. And that was a fun, I mean, it was a great episode. Talk about guys with yeah. like crazy energy. They, they were yeah. in. Yeah. And so that was my first, I, I had, you know, heard the name Turo uh, and, but I'd never really dug into it. And the, the next month in November, I was heading to Austin with my family and I was looking at rental car prices and I wanted to have a car that was like big enough to deal with our luggage and, you know, the four of us comfortably because I knew we were going to be driving around a lot uh, while we were down there. Sure. And so I'm looking at renting a larger vehicle or whatever, an SUV. And for whatever reason, at that point in time, all of the car rental companies prices were just totally off the roof. So I kept checking back because I know these things are going to change. It's it's fine. You know, I'm like, OK, check. And then one time I'm visiting some site and there's an ad for Turo. And I thought, oh, yeah, right. 
I should check this out. So I did. I wound up renting a vehicle through Turo and it went through the whole experience and it was what I would consider a normal car. And it wasn't, you know, a, a luxury vehicle or anything like that. But there's lots of those out there, it, which I didn't quite yeah. realize from, you know, doing the the uh, interview with those guys because they're more about the specialty cars. Which yeah, is, they're the, you know, the high end, yeah. high end stuff. But that's not yeah. all Turo is. Although maybe that's all Turo should be. Um, <laughs> I can see where this is going. <laughs> yeah. So you know, we talked with the guy, and I'm very used to the whole like sharing economy. We stay in Airbnbs. In fact, we stayed in an Airbnb down there. I, you know, I use Uber and Lyft all the time. So like that whole concept of having to like going through something like Turo and then discussing logistics with like the dude who owns the car is totally normal to me. It was fine. Went through all that. We got the car and you know, it was everything that the listing said, but what the listings don't talk about there is maintenance on the vehicle. Oh, and this vehicle clearly had not been maintained at the <laughs> level that really it should be to be roadworthy. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. And he, like the shocks made a lot of noise. I mean, to the point where we still drive around and, and you know, make the noise of the shocks from the, <laughs> is that right? from the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, this has become part of Hamilton family lore now. This nice. will, I will yeah. never live this down. So <laughs> so we're in Austin and we like we were there for a couple of days. I think we were there for five days total. We had been there for maybe a day and a half, uh, maybe maybe two days almost. And, uh, you know, we, we called this car the Prancer only because in the vacation movie with the new v v vacation movie, they, they had this Prancer that was like this piece of crap that they had to drive on yep. vacation. So we called it the Prancer. It wasn't a Prancer because there is no car called the Prancer, at least I don't think. But that's what we called it. And so we were used to the Prancer and it was fine. And uh, but, you know, every time we went over a, a speed bump or whatever, or even took a turn too tightly, like the shocks would just squeal and all this stuff. And all of a sudden, uh, we're driving. We were down there going to uh, tour uh, the University of Texas for my daughter, who's interested in that school. Oh, sure. Yeah. And so we're on our way to, our, we, I think we did three tours, uh, different departments or whatever while we were there. We're on our way to our second one on the highway. And uh, the tire light comes on. Like, okay. And then the tire blows out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I got it off the highway, oh, thankfully. Okay. I mean, yes. like, you, you know, but it could have been a disaster. We, I got it off the highway and, and parked it in, you know, this bank parking lot that was right there off the highway. I, this tire was shredded. And then I looked at all four tires and there was like no tread left down on, on any of these. Like these were all really dangerous tires. Wow. And they were old. Like the rubber on them was all cracking and everything. And I had opted for like, you know, the high end insurance on this thing or whatever, because I didn't want I didn't want headaches, you know. And so I call Turo and of course, we're standing there and the clock's ticking. We were actually a little bit early heading to our thing, but it was like, we want to make this tour. Like, this is the whole reason we're here. Yeah. Yeah. So I call Turo and Turo says, oh, maintenance issues. You have to talk with the owner. Like, wow. Okay, fine. So I had the owner's cell phone number. I was able to get in touch with him. I talked to him. He's like, I don't know why Turo told you to talk to me. You're the one that bought insurance. It's like, no, man, I, well, I think this is not an, in like, if you needed new tires for your car, you don't file an insurance yeah, claim. That's like, right. It would be nice, maybe, but <laughs> that's not how it works. And, uh, and so we wound up taking an Uber from the parking lot to, to make the tour. We were totally there on time. It was fine. We left the car. Uh, he, he had left it with a lockbox in it, unlocked in a parking garage for us to get ah. it initially. So we basically did the same thing with the bank lot. I only left one of the doors open um, so that if somebody came up or whatever, but uh it was, I mean, it was a mess. And then, and then wow. I rented a car. The best part was using a, my iPhone. We were in the car, in the Uber, you know, going to this tour it, and it's this Friday afternoon. So I'm thinking, oh man, like, how am I going to rent a car? Like, how am yeah. I going to deal with this? Cause Turo was like, no, you've got to sort this out with them, with the owner before we will find you a replacement car. And it was like, they're oh. going to, it's going to be a couple days before we get you a replacement car. It's like, wow, oh, dude, yeah, that's, that's not how not Avis good. works. No. Yes, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> like you get me an, another car right away. Yeah. And, uh, and so I did, I got on the Avis app for whatever reason, the prices had come down precipitously. Uh, 
And so we got a vehicle for almost pennies. I mean, it was way cheaper than the Turo thing would have been. Yeah. Turo gave us a refund. I mean, it, it all That's worked good. out. But yeah. my family at this point has said, uh, yeah, you, you, like you're not allowed to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Like, That's well, great. not every car is going to be yeah, that way. I, and, you know, and I yeah. agree with you. I think that the real value is because like I, I had a... a I'd fly out and go to a meeting uh, a couple weeks ago and I was only going to be in, in this town for a day in the city. Sure. And I was like, well, I'm going to rent a Tesla, you know, because I've, cool. I haven't driven one before and I want to check it out. Well, that's a great place to go and pick the exact car you would like to rent. Yes. Um, but from for a day-to-day rental, I, I would agree with you. Um, I think it's a great resource for a specialty car, yep. you know, a convertible, an exotic, you know, or something that's you otherwise, you know, you really want to drive that you wouldn't own yourself. Uh yeah, I it's, know it's for that, for that, it's great. Cause you do, you yeah. get to, you get to experience owning that car for a day. Unfortunately, Correct. what I got to experience was owning that Prancer for a day and a half. And it was a disaster. Dead after 10, after a decade or so <laughs> on the road, <laughs> somebody beating on it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's great. Yeah. 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 That's great. So, but well, very cool. Well, you know, it's, it's an experience. It's a, it's, <laughs> it is an experience, uh, you know, and, and uh, I think it's great. You know, we've had a great year, a lot of good shows. And, uh, you know, we've got some uh, good interviews lined up for next year. And we certainly if uh, folks, if you know, small business owners that you think ought to be on the show to tell their story, we would love to uh, hear from you. Feedback at business co. And uh, we'd also love for you to visit us on Facebook and the Small Business Support Group at businessshow.co slash Facebook. Come on over and tell your story. Yeah, tell your story. And uh, make sure to check out textexpander.com slash podcast so that you can save 20% and join Shannon and I in uh, saving time, too. You'll save way more time. It's great. Happy New Year, everybody.